We're back and the GOP is still pissed at Joe Biden. This time it's about taxes. This week on The Breakdown, we're talking about what the Biden administration calls the American Families Plan Tax Compliance Agenda. And it's basically a plan to beef up the IRS and go after people who aren't paying their taxes. This is an $80 billion proposal that the Biden administration says will crack down on tax evasion by high earners and large corporations. It should theoretically be an area of agreement between Democrats and Republicans, but it's turned into a flashpoint between them, actually, and the GOP has started attacking it pretty aggressively. I mean, I don't think we've stopped to think of what $80 billion the IRS actually means. It's a huge sum of money. Biden wants to hire nearly 87,000 new IRS workers over the next 10 years which would be a massive hike considering that in 2009, the agency employed just under 75,000 people. So big increase in auditors and a big increase in targeting the wealthy and corporations who uh, everyone assumes is hiding and not complying with uh, uh, tax laws. So once he's gone after increasing corporate taxes and increasing the uh, individual uh, rate on the wealthiest Americans, they have to start uh, looking under the couch cushions to find that additional revenue. When the administration first proposed this policy, you could tell they were a little defensive about it. Nobody is a big fan of the IRS. Uh, increasing the number of IRS agents uh, is not exactly a top issue for a lot of Americans. This is something that Republicans have really seized on. So Democrats, especially Democrats in the Senate and especially moderate Democrats in the Senate, have been sensitive to all of the tax components of Joe Biden's agenda. The GOP sees some sensitivity on this issue and they're making three big arguments. The first is that the expansion of the IRS is a way to raise taxes. The second argument is this sort of political argument about government workers and unions. By increasing the federal government by almost 90,000 employees over the next decade, and so the GOP is saying this is a way for the Biden administration to pay off its allies in the public sector unions. And then the third attack has been that the Biden administration wants increased IRS oversight of political organizations. Conservatives have launched a campaign of TV and social media ads against Biden's plan, which could be bad news for his fellow Democrats in the midterms. Agents aggressively coming for every dime they can grab at your house and at our small businesses. Despite Biden, Um, putting forward $6 trillion in new spending over the next 10 years. We haven't seen the kind of backlash that previous Democratic presidents experienced in their first year when they proposed a significant expansion of government. That happened in 2009 with Barack Obama and the emergence of the Tea Party. That happened in 1993 with Bill Clinton and the emergence of a very vociferous conservative movement. Some people argue that the pandemic has made it a lot safer for Democrats to propose expansion of government because the government has been so instrumental in getting people stimulus checks, extending and enhancing unemployment benefits, and that people have truly relied on the government uh, to save them. Is this policy particularly progressive? In one sense, yes, because um, it's a policy where the federal government is trying to get more tax from the wealthy and corporations to pay for uh, policies that overwhelmingly will benefit um, working class and and middle class Americans. So we're constantly comparing the first year of Biden's administration with the first year of Obama's administration. And there are a lot of similarities. In both cases, Democrats controlled the White House and Congress. In both cases, There were crises that uh, welcomed both presidents when they got into the White House. But what we haven't seen so far is a real 
backlash in the way that we did in 2009. By this point in the Obama administration, the White House had started to really take on water. His health care bill, his climate change bill, his stimulus package, they were all suffering from withering attacks on the part of Republicans. And you could sort of see the hurricane already forming that would wipe out the Democratic majorities in the House in 2010. Biden, with his $2 trillion COVID relief bill, avoided a lot of the kind of friction and debate that in uh, previous Democratic presidencies started to damage uh, the White House. There is a debate in the Democratic Party between the progressive wing and the more centrist wing about Uh, the relationship between passing lots of big progressive uh, legislation and what happens in the midterms. The targets are the wealthy and corporations, and the benefits are intended to go to working class and middle class Americans. Biden has learned lessons from his time as vice president. People vote with their wallets, and he's hoping to help out the wallets of middle and lower income Americans.